Hello and welcome to Fishing with Joe. I'm spokesmodel Alana. Casting accuracy and efficiency is the reason why some anglers have greater success in the water. If you want to be a better angler, then it's lesson time. Grab your rod and take a cast with us. Fishing with Joe, uh-huh, you gotta love it. Hello everyone, it's Fishing with Joe seminar time. This show will be celebrating the 100 year anniversary of r, &R. You won't want to miss this one. Meet Joe at the seminar, get free pizza, get free birthday cake, have your picture taken with a spokesmodel, and more. To celebrate, we'll be giving away a $100 tackle certificate to a lucky fan. We'll see you at the seminar. Fishing with Joe, you gotta love it. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Fishing with Joe. We're gonna do something a little different today had quite a bit of requests or quite a few requests from uh, people out there in the audience that means you and they want to know a little bit about casting um, in order to be successful in a fishing show and to be a successful angler you gotta know how to cast if you can't put if you can't put the lure on the money you're not gonna you're not gonna catch as many fish as you should be catching so today i'm gonna go over some different casting techniques and some different casting styles i kind of use to get it done in the show and to catch fish in hard to uh hard to fish spots i'm using a bait cast reel and it's a small bait cast reel and this is a six foot rod um, it's eight pound line and I'm using a walking bait. So that's what I'm going to do my demonstration with is the walking bait. Um, I like a six foot rod because it's lighter, smaller, it's lighter. I'm on a boat, so I don't need a really long rod. Um, I can get away with a shorter rod and I'd rather take the trade off of a lighter rod as opposed to the longer, heavier rod. You know, longer rod may give me a little more control, but the smaller rod is so much lighter. And at the end of the day, after I've cast it a thousand times, you know, I'm still gonna be holding this, up, this one up and casting, whereas with the longer one, I wouldn't. All right, small bait cast reel. First thing, when you start out, what you wanna do is you wanna set your reel and you set your reel according to the weight of the lure that you're using. For me, I set it a little faster. The first thing you wanna start off doing is you wanna start off, if you've got a reel with magnets like this one does, you wanna start off with your magnets about halfway. So mine goes up to 10, I'm gonna set it at five. The reason I do that is that when I'm on the water, there'll be times when I'm casting into the wind and times when I'm casting with the wind. And if I've got it set on five, I can adjust it up just a little bit or I can adjust it down a little bit. And so that helps me quickly compensate for wind conditions when I'm casting. And you want to use the spool tension control and it's going to be the knob on the inside of the reel right here and what you want to do is you want to hold that lure in the air and press your thumb button and just let that lure drop and when it drops you want to look at the reel, spool the reel to see if it backlashes or not. Now this didn't backlash because I stopped the spool with my thumb, but it would have. And so I want to slow the fall of that lure by increasing or turning on the button or turning on the knob and increasing that tension. And I want to increase it to the point that when that lure falls, it doesn't overrun. It's beginning to overrun again. So, reel it back up, and I want to tighten it down some more. 
and I want to continue to go through that process until it slowly goes down and it doesn't backlash. All right. Still too fast. Tighten it down some more. All right. It's going down real slow. It hits the water. It's really not backlashing. So here's what I'm going to do now. I am going to make my first cast. Have you ever wanted to go fishing with Joe? Well, this is your chance. Joe has the best fishing guide service in Central Ohio. Go to fishingwithjoe.com and book your trip today. Now, let's get back to the action. So, here's what I'm going to do now. I am going to make my first cast. Now, when you're making a cast, often there are individuals who cast and when they cast, they keep the reel level. But when you're making an overhand cast like I'm about to make, you actually want to take the reel and turn it to the side so that the handles of the reel are pointing up toward the sky. So you got the reel, you're holding it to the side. What it does is by holding the reel to the side, it helps increase casting accuracy. So when you look at a target and you mark it, you'll point your toe toward that target, hold the reel so that the handles are up, rod goes above your head, press that button, and you want to think about that target. You want to take that rod and you want to point it directly at that target. And make sure that when you swing through that cast, that the rod tip is in a direct line with that target. Now, when you do that, you've made sure that your cast is not going to go left or right of that target. You're going to be right where you need to dead center. Now the next thing and the only thing you need to worry about at this point is, is getting the distance correct. That is casting hard enough to get it to go where you need, need it to go and then feathering that spool to make sure that it doesn't go too far. What I suggest in a cast is overcasting. Find out where you're to mark your target and think about it. Now, if you cast a little bit too hard and you, you can always slow that lure down with your thumb by throwing, slowing the spool down and feathering it a little bit. But if you haven't cast it hard enough, it'll be impossible to get it to go any further at that point. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my first cast. Reel to the side, looking for my target, making my cast. All right, there we go right in line with where I wanted it to be. I feathered that spool a little bit with my thumb to make sure that I didn't have any overrun. If there's any overrun, I can go back to my magnets right here and adjust them up. If it's too much tension and I didn't cast as far as I want it to, I can adjust it down a little bit. So there we go. There we go. Now, uh, reel this bait in and uh, make another cast. I actually saw a fish jump right over here. So I'm gonna cast it over there and see if I can't get him to bite it. Weldcraft makes the most durable, reliable aluminum boats on the planet. All welded hauls and heavy duty construction are the reason why. With over 25 years of manufacturing experience, you can't go wrong. Go to wellcraft.com today and find out why your next boat should be a wellcraft. Now let's get back to the action. All right. Now, I'm just going to walk this bait in. 
It is a walking bait. A lot of people ask me, they say, Joe, how do you work your walking bait? I see you use this bait all the time. Show me how you work this bait. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny. There's a little bit of a story to how I work this bait. Um, first thing up is I use light line. There are many individuals who use heavier line because heavier line doesn't sink as fast. I like lighter line. A lighter line is more supple and it gives the bait more of an action. But what I do is I tie a special knot on that bait. And the knot that I use is called the king sling knot. All right. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tie this knot for you. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and put this line through the eye of the lure. And I'm gonna pull it through. So I have almost three feet worth of line. That's quite a bit of line. It's quite a bit. Then I'm gonna grab the end so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm gonna grab this loop right here. I'm gonna count three, I'm gonna twist it three times. It's one time, that's two times, and that's three times. After I do that, I'm gonna take that lure and I'm gonna pass it back through that hole. And when I pass it through the hole, that's the trick. It's an art to tying this knot. It's not always an exact science. Once you have that loop, don't let it go. Use your index finger and stick it on the end of the lure to hold that loop. And you wanna pull that knot down around the head of the lure, especially if you have a walking bait. And you wanna slowly work that knot down to where the eyelid is. And as you're working that knot down to where the eyelid is, you wanna get it tight not really tight around the eyelet, just loose. And then take your finger now and pop that knot off of the eyelet. And when you pop that knot off of the eyelet, you'll have just a little bit of space, a little loop right at the eyelet. And that small loop gives that bait that extra erratic side-to-side -side action that you wouldn't have if you didn't tie that knot. Very, very important to tie this knot. They call this knot the king sling knot. Now I have a long tag in and I have my tool right here, a pair of scissors, and I am going to clip that tag end off and there we go. Lure is ready to go. All right. Take that tag in, align, and I'm gonna dispose of it properly. But for right now, I'm gonna put it in my pocket. There we go. I'm also gonna put that. Up. Okay. So we're back to casting again. With our casting once again. Mark your target, rod over your head. And just kind of simulate through, just kind of swing it through and imagine that bait hitting that target. Reel handles up, feather that spool lightly. That's it, that's our cast now working that bait back in. The first thing that I do is I let that bait rest for just a second on the top of the water. I wanna kinda of let the rings go away. Then I wanna reel in any slack line that I have. And what I do is I position myself with my rod tip down near the side of the boat. It gives me more power, more authority when I'm working that bait. 
So, I begin by pulsing that bait, pulsing that rod tip. There are so many people that just kind of reel on the reel, just crank on the handle, and they don't get the action out of the bait that they need. You, you work that bait by pulsing the rod tip, but you do it to kind of a beat. You got to think about the song in your head. Skip, scap, scallywag, get a dog a bone. You set the hook hard, you bring the fish home. That's the beat that you work that bait to. It's a rhythm bait. A lot of people don't know that a walking bait is a rhythm bait. You need some rhythm in order to work this bait. That's it, right there. That's your little song that you're imagining in your head as you work this bait. Throw it out, let the rings go away. Pull up the tight line, skip, scap, scallywag, get a dog a bone, you set the hook hard, you bring the fish home, pause. The reason you pause is that the fish that see that lure coming along the top of the water, they'll follow it. And when they're following that lure, they're waiting for it to do something erratic. They're waiting for it to do something crazy. When you stop it, that's that crazy thing. Now they're sitting there, they're looking at it. It's like a staring contest. And when they see it take off again, that's when they attack it. That's when you look for the strike. Strikes most often come at three times. A, when the bait hits the water and they Im immediately see it. The second time is when you're pulling it along and you stop it and then you restart it. And the third time is, is when you get it close to the cover. There we go. All right. Thank you for watching this episode of Fishing with Joe. We're glad you enjoyed the show. If you have show ideas or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment box below. Check us out on Facebook anytime. Tight lines and great fishing. Fishing with Joe. You have got to love it. Fishing with Joe is proudly brought to you in part by r and Bait and Tackle, the best bait and tackle service in the Buckeye State. Check out my favorite web service, EasyWeb. It's professional, it's affordable, changes anytime you want. Call toll free 1-877-MY-EASYWEB or sign on to 1877easyweb.com. Okay, Joe, we have your motor running uh, just like it's supposed to, and uh, you're ready to go back on the water again. Larry, that, j that didn't take any time at all. You got me fixed up right away. I mean, I I'm so excited. I broke down on the water and I thought it was over with, but, but you got me running in next to no time. Oh, thank you so much. I see the phone is ringing. Oh, yeah. That's another That's person. That's another person that wants their motor fixed. Hopefully it is. Thank you, Joe. I'm glad we could take care of it so soon. It's All been right. a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much.